Satoshi Kon is one of the masters of visual storytelling. His subtle yet descriptive techniques make his films some of the most aesthetically entertaining works in the medium. Not only does he use standard techniques to their fullest, such as transitions or composition, but he redefines the limits of what can be done with certain elements. Kon takes advantage of what animation can do more so than almost anybody. And one of my favourite techniques used in Perfect Blue is colour theory, and thankfully Kon doesn't just use the standard predefined methods like red for danger or green for jealousy. Although these can be perfectly fine storytelling devices, Perfect Blue steps up a notch. In this video I'm going to be looking at how Perfect Blue uses the colour red in its narrative. Red is used to show character progression, to foreshadow and to guide the viewer through the twisted reality of the film. The use of red mirrors what's happening in the story. I've seen very few films use colour in such a complex way, so let's see how it's done. The start of the movie is designed to put your guard down. It's fairly normal and only subtly hints at things to come. Our main character transitions from being an idol to being an actor, to the displeasure of some of her more passionate fans. We think initially that this is the dramatic centre of the story, but soon we find out that there's more. Our first real event is the exploding fan mail which is handed to me as manager by a man in a red jacket. This is the first big shock of the film and the start of a roller coaster. But Red really comes into play during the next scene where Rumi sets up Mima's internet, which is a very important resource for the later narrative. There's a lot of prominent red areas in her room, but it's later in the scene that really strikes me. Essentially this is where Mima's alter ego is born. Her split desire to be an idol and to pursue a less pure career of an actress. We have this mirror shot with more prominent red areas to establish the idea. And just as she realises what's happening, we have this shot. Mima's face is almost engulfed in red. This is the beginning of both her spiral into madness and the dominance of the colour red. It then cleverly transitions into another important scene. Mima's acting role in a drama series, Double Bind. It won't be the main focus of this video, but it's important to note that what's happening in the drama's story directly references or mirrors what's happening in Mima's life. And yes, Double Bind is a double of Perfect Blue. This link is really established with the following shot of the same red on a catwalk and a fake murder, which is also some smart foreshadowing for events further in the movie. And here is the end of Perfect Blue holding back. From now on Mima begins to be engulfed in madness and the colour red leads us through it. Mima's real descent into madness starts in one of the most powerful scenes in the film, the fake rape scene. This is where she becomes disconnected with the Mima we once knew. The build up to the scene is really interesting. We have multiple mirror shots symbolising multiple Mimas. The train and then the TV shop. We're also subconsciously warned that the scene is coming up. Mina is reading a book while talking about the upcoming rape scene and it dominates the shot. Every time we see Red engulf a shot like this we know that Mima's madness is developing. The fake rape scene has a lot of significant visual cues for the narrative, possibly the first time the film really establishes them. What's initially striking is what Mima is wearing, a dress outlined in red with a red necklace and red earrings, as if the madness is starting to overtake her. Even more interestingly so, the outfit that she's wearing now is very similar if not almost identical to her old idol outfit. So the new Mima is overpowering the old Mima. As the scene gets going the shot is engulfed in red lighting and Mima is positioned in front of a red backdrop. It's also interesting to note that we see the scenes filming stop and start, making sure we see the lines between reality and madness. Though they're just acting, you can tell it has drastic effects on Mima. This change is highlighted when Mima returns to her apartment. The only real visible colour is red. Everything else is covered in darkness. This shows that the madness is consuming her whole life. It also continues in an interview in a few scenes later when she talks about the rape scene and how she wants to forget her old idol career, with the obvious red background. Another smart motif to look out for is fish. Her fish in this scene are all dead, and she has a breakdown. The breakdown scene is also where she separates from her old self and they start a conflict, and then once her old self goes away, the fish are alive again. It's almost as if Mima is fighting back, and the red lets us show when. The next important scene is Mima reading her blog. The blog talks in favour of her old self while she disagrees. The screen turns red and the old Mima appears. This is a vital scene as it's the first time both Minas have a direct conflict. Old Mima actually starts to dominate the scene as she comes out of the computer into the room. She's shown standing above Mima on a red backdrop. A red backdrop with fish on it. Old Mima is now taking over. Now this is where the movie really starts taking a dive into the mysterious and the surreal. We have our first murder by the unknown murderer. This shot is set up with a red lit text warning, a bunch of red lines and then finally a sprawl of red pipes behind the character's head. And it's all building up to the next shot, a fantastic overpowering shot of the red elevator floor. This has to be one of my favourite shots in the film. It's visually stunning and it tells the story of the movie so far. Mima's old music is blaring loudly while engulfed in a sea of red, a sea of blood. 
The madness this red represents is overpowering everything in the movie here, and I think you all know what happens next. Mima confronts the madness once again in a later car scene. The lighting turns red in a tunnel and we have another mirror shot. Instead of letting the madness take over this time, Mima actually gets out the car to pursue her old self. This is a big change as she's starting to fight back. The next scene is the photoshoot scene where Mima is degraded into a mere sex object. Old Mima is certainly not happy about this, in fact we're told this when we see the photographer. What colour is the backdrop? You guessed it. At this point in the story, Mima is realising that the path she's pursuing might not be the best, but also that she doesn't want to return to her old idol self. A small detail is spliced in here as the scene quickly cuts to her idol group singing without her. They leave a gap in the middle where Mima would stand and they're wearing two of the three primary colours. They wear blue and green, leaving Mima with… red. Mima now starts to move towards her own individual identity, which is shown when Mima leaves the photoshoot and hides in a bathroom. A red bathroom. Here she confronts old Mima again, although new Mima is starting to take a little bit of control. She's still weak, and, but she's still weak and allows the photographer to take advantage of her. Now this is the part of the movie where the narrative is at its most surreal and Mima is at her most confused. There's a lot of conflicting thoughts flying around, and as a viewer we're not really sure what to believe is real or not, or even which Mima is which. One thing we do know is that Mima is certainly still battling with her old self, as we have our trusty red friend to guide us through. So again in this scene we have our mirrored narrative in double bind. Mima's dialogue and the drama is essentially what she's feeling, and yet again we have this overpowering presence of Red as she wrestles with the idea of changing. The drama here also references an alter ego, which shows Mima is at a point of more understanding. The next important scene is here when Mima comes to visit the radio station. It seems fine until the shot starts to get more and more red, and then we have our next interaction with the old Mima, who's sat next to a suspicious bottle of red liquid. What's important here is that Mima actively chases her old self. This is the first time in the movie where she's taken this much control, but as this part of the movie is so surreal it's difficult to tell what's actually happening and what's her imagination. The chase continues onto the street and just as she passes a red umbrella, she's seemingly hit by a truck, which if you look closely is driven by her stalker so it's most likely a metaphorical dream. And we have some hints and foreshadowing in this later scene in her apartment. Her friend Rumi is wearing a red top, which will become obvious later, and then Mima smashes her cup of tea and we're shown a shot of blood all over her hands. This can be interpreted in a few ways, I personally think it's there to throw a spanner in the works, maybe to make the viewer certain that Mima is the murderer. This scene is repeated a number of times and Mima has a lot of time for self analysis. She is obsessing over herself now and this shot of her sitting in the dark reading her blog with the red fish poster above her head tells us a lot. At this point in the story we're unsure which way Mima's mind has gone, which makes the next scene even more shocking, it's the second murder scene. And we can tell this as the photographer sits on his red couch, and then again as he answers the door for pizza, the pizza delivery girl is wearing red trousers and carrying a red bag. At this point in the story we presume that Mima is the murderer, and an interesting detail here if that is the case is where she stabs her victims. She always stabs them in their eyes, and in this scene she stabs him in the crotch too. It seems that her murders are metaphors for what old Mima wants to get rid of. The producers are stabbed in their eyes because of their lust for fame and popularity, and the photographer is stabbed in the crotch for his sexualised photoshoot. Another little detail in this scene is the return of fish, this time not in red but in black and white. A lot of the murder scene cuts to shots of Mima murdering in front of three lights. Blue, green and red. Is this a reference back to the old idol group? We're approaching the finale of the story now, coming closer and closer to the climax of Mima's madness. Will she overcome her old self or be consumed? We have some more double bind sequences and probably my favourites from the film. And after filming ends on that, the real drama starts. She is attacked by her stalker who is obsessed with the old Mima. It's almost a reenactment of the previous fake rape scene. What's interesting about the use of red in this scene is that it's not really overpowering. It's there, it's in the backdrop of the stage, but it's as if this is the time for Mima to either be consumed or break free. We're shown that she does manage to escape here, but later on in the scene we see that him and the manager were actually stabbed in the eyes. Yet before Mima used a hammer and the manager went home. So who is actually the murderer now? Is it the new Mima, the old Mima? Can't be the stalker unless he murdered himself. Well the scene actually tells you who it is before the story does. When Rumi and Mima are reunited after this scene we have the strongest use of red in ages. The whole background is bright red, but it's split equally between Rumi and Mima. Normally the red is just between the old Mima and the new Mima. Then while they drive home in Rumi's red car, through a red lit tunnel, Mima speaks to Rumi through her reflection, just as she's done throughout the movie to old Mima. Rumi even refers to Mima's apartment as Mima's room, which is the name of her blog. So they return to the apartment and by the way the fish are alive again. 
and a new fish poster is shown, but this time in blue, not red. This is like a preparation for the finale, a chance to escape the madness. A madness that we then learn has been Rumi all along, as old Mima slash Rumi emerges wearing a fully red dress. This is the embodiment of Mima's madness, and it's time to confront it. They start the final battle. As Mima escapes onto the roof, she runs away onto a walkway. Everything is grey or black at this point, except the red railings of the walkway. This is like the symbolic path she has to overcome to escape her madness. She then runs through a tunnel of red curtains that have a similar effect. There's a gruesome but kind of poetic ending to the fight. Rumi is killed by glass, and glass is what she's used to communicate with Mima throughout the movie. She stares at her shattered reflection, maybe thinking about how poetic it is. Let's talk about the ending scene after this chase a little bit, because you might think it's just quite simple. Old Mima is killed, and new Mima overcomes her madness to become who she truly wants to be. At the end of the chase scene, Rumi walks onto the road and transforms back into old Mima, just as she's about to get hit by a truck. She then turns and smiles at new Mima, and then new Mima actually comes to push her out of the way, saving her. They're both knocked unconscious, and this is kind of the end of the scene. You might think that she was just saving an old friend, but the movie doesn't end like this. It's presumably weeks later and Rumi is shown walking along carrying a bunch of red roses. She's obviously had a psychological breakdown and we're told that Rumi has lost her memories or her personality. Or she's lost the old Mima. Then Mima says something really interesting. She says, thanks to her, I am who I am today. And then she walks away. And then the final shot of the film, Mima gets into her red car, looks in the mirror and says, no, I'm real, and then the credits roll to some upbeat music. So did she overcome her alter ego, which Mima won? Con really left us with a puzzle on our hands. It is an interpretive one, but I love interpretive endings. So what do you think? Who won the battle of the two Mimas? And what did you think about the film's smart use of colour? Please do continue the discussion in the comments. Also, this is all part of the new format I'm trying out. People seem to be enjoying the more analytical video style and I'm enjoying making them. So please let me know in the comments and show your support by liking the video. Anyway, that's all for this one. Cheers.